Ibrahim Traoré has just dealt France another fatal blow. Traoré is a resolute leader, unwavering in his commitment to guide Burkina Faso through a turbulent political landscape marked by jealousy and dishonesty. As he navigates a world where power and influence often breed deceit, Traoré encounters numerous challenges, including rumors and defamation. Yet, he meets these attacks with unyielding tenacity, fully aware that the path to progress is fraught with difficulties. In this perilous environment, he stands tall, ready to confront any adversaries who seek to tarnish his reputation. This resilient leader is prepared to face any challenge head-on, refusing to let a flood of lies defeat him. In today's video, we examine the life and leadership of Ibrahim Traoré, a man determined to combat his adversaries with truth and an unyielding spirit. We will also examine some of the media outlets Traoré has suspended for spreading misinformation. But before we continue, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay updated on developments in Burkina Faso and Africa as a whole. Burkina Faso recently suspended the French broadcaster TV5 for six months, citing the spread of disinformation. The communications regulator, CSC, accused the channel of disseminating malicious insinuations about the transitional government. In addition to the suspension, TV5 was fined 50 million CFA francs, approximately $82,000. The move comes amid accusations that France is attempting to incite protests in Burkina Faso. The media outlet faced particular criticism for featuring Newton Ahmed Berry, who led the election commission from 2014 to 2021 and has been vocal in his criticism of the military regime. It is noteworthy that several foreign news outlets, predominantly French, have faced temporary or permanent closures since Captain Ibrahim Traoré took power in a coup in September 2022. This video provides a closer look at Ibrahim Traoré's unwavering resolve and his efforts to confront misinformation head-on. His leadership exemplifies a steadfast commitment to truth and progress, despite the numerous obstacles and adversaries he faces. In April, Burkina Faso's military government suspended BBC and Voice of America after they broadcasted a Human Rights Watch HRW, report accusing the military of executing civilians. During the same month, TV5 was also suspended for two weeks for similar reasons. According to HRW, the army had killed over 223 people in areas with alleged militant collaborations, including 56 minors. This report was extensively covered by international media outlets, such as the Associated Press. The suspension hampered BBC's ability to provide independent and accurate news to its audience. However, BBC asserted that it would continue reporting on the region in the public interest, without fear or favor. Additionally, Burkina Faso's authorities ordered internet service providers to block access to Voice of America, the BBC, and HRW websites and digital platforms. The government has previously shut down French radio and television channels and expelled correspondents from French newspapers. Therefore, TV5's suspension was not an isolated incident. On September 25th of the previous year, Burkina Faso's transitional government suspended all distribution of media associated with the French news outlet Jeune Afrique. This action followed an article on the Jeune Afrique website alleging growing discontent within Burkina Faso's military barracks. The government's media crackdown was further highlighted in May when hundreds of Burkina Bay protested outside the U.S. Embassy in Ouagadougou. The protest was against Washington's reaction to the HRW accusations of the military's executions. This series of suspensions underscores the military government's aggressive stance against media outlets perceived to spread misinformation or criticize its actions. These measures have significantly impacted the flow of independent news and information, both domestically and internationally. The authorities' actions have sparked concerns about press freedom and the public's right to access unbiased information. In response to allegations of massacres, London and Washington jointly urged Ouagadougou to conduct a thorough investigation and hold those responsible accountable. Shopkeepers and private sector employees marched towards the U.S. Embassy, chanting anti-imperialist slogans and waving Russian and Burkina Faso flags. The embassy, guarded by riot police, witnessed a significant outpouring of local frustration. Mahamadou Alago, spokesman for the Liberation Federation of Pan-Africanists, which organized the demonstration, voiced a common sentiment. We have come to deliver a message to the Americans to put an end to these accusations against our armed forces who are defending the country at the cost of their lives.
This statement reflects the broader sentiment of many Burkina Bay who questioned the whereabouts of human rights defenders when terrorists were attacking their communities. Amidst these tensions, there is a debate about press freedom in Burkina Faso. Some argue that local journalists should not face government censorship on top of the challenges of covering the nation's insecurity. SBU Morang, director of the Reporters Without Borders Sub-Saharan Africa Bureau, stated in April that the media suspensions were another blow to press freedom in Burkina Faso. However, opinions are divided. Some support the suspensions, believing that certain news outlets and TV stations report beyond their remit, possibly exacerbating tensions. As the media landscape remains contentious, the country faces escalating tensions. Compounding these challenges, Burkina Faso's military regime announced an extension of its rule for five years. This decision, made during national consultations, set the transition period at 60 months starting on July 2nd. Colonel Matalo, leader of the organizing committee of the National Dialogue Process, affirmed this timeline. This extension has sparked concern and debate about the future of democracy and governance in Burkina Faso. Colonel Matalo announced that after the extended transition period, Burkina Faso's leader and acting president, Ibrahim Traore, will be eligible to compete in any subsequent election. The new charter, which redefines the political landscape, eliminates the use of quotas to assign seats in the assembly to members of traditional parties. Instead, patriotism will be the sole criterion for selecting deputies, marking a significant shift in the political framework. Initially, the original charter set a 21-month transition period to civilian administration with a deadline of July 1st. However, Traore has often highlighted that holding elections amidst the current unstable security environment would be highly challenging. This extended timeline aims to address these challenges and ensure a more stable transition. News outlets and some TV stations argue that publishing false statements made by newsmakers is justified because such statements are newsworthy. This perspective parallels the defense used by social media corporations that cite free speech to justify the dissemination of deceptive statements. However, this argument overlooks the psychological dynamics at play. People often accept claims that align with their pre-existing views, regardless of their accuracy. When exposed to such assertions, they tend to exaggerate, remember, and spread them further. Thus, careless reporting, even if followed by fact-checking, does not effectively curb the spread of misinformation. Evidence does not support the idea that news organizations' fact-checking dramatically slows the spread of erroneous information. Even when the uninformed attempt to fact-check their opinions, they rarely change their views. The most effective strategy for news organizations to counteract misinformation is to reduce the dissemination of false claims altogether. Moreover, the shift in news sources to social media has exacerbated the spread of false information. Social media platforms enable rapid and widespread dissemination of misinformation, complicating efforts to maintain accurate and reliable information streams. In this complex media environment, the transition period in Burkina Faso, extended to 60 months starting July 2nd, aims to foster stability and ensure a more secure and transparent political process. Social media has transformed the landscape of news consumption, empowering anyone with an account to become a news outlet. This democratization of information dissemination has profound implications as individuals and established news organizations alike vie for visibility among vast online audiences. However, the dynamics of social media often prioritize sensationalism over accuracy, leading to a skewed perception of reality. The quest for attention drives much of what is shared on social media platforms. Posts that provoke outrage or resonate emotionally tend to spread faster and wider, regardless of their factual basis. This phenomenon is exacerbated by the ease with which misinformation can be shared and amplified through the click of a share button. Consequently, false narratives can propagate rapidly through vast networks, overshadowing attempts to correct or clarify them with accurate information. Ibrahim Traoré's efforts to curb this trend underscore a critical issue. False information can spread up to 10 times faster than corrections. Once misinformation gains traction, it becomes deeply entrenched in public consciousness, often surpassing the reach and impact of subsequent corrections. The algorithms governing social media platforms play a pivotal role in this process. Designed to maximize user engagement, 
by presenting content tailored to individual preferences and past interactions. This business model incentivizes the proliferation of content that is captivating but not necessarily accurate, perpetuating a cycle where sensationalism often outweighs factual integrity. In this environment, the challenge lies in balancing the desire for engaging content with the responsibility to uphold truth and accuracy. Users are encouraged to critically evaluate the information they encounter, considering its source and potential biases. The suspension of TV5 in Burkina Faso has sparked significant concerns about press independence and the broader implications for free speech and unbiased news dissemination in the country. While the government argues that such measures are necessary for national security, it is crucial to uphold principles that safeguard the public's right to access diverse and accurate information, especially in times where knowledge shapes public opinion and holds those in power accountable. To ensure that media outlets in Burkina Faso operate with greater caution and adherence to ethical standards, several proactive steps can be taken. First and foremost, there is a need for comprehensive review and reform of media regulations to ensure they are fair, transparent, and aligned with international norms. The independence of regulatory bodies, such as the Superior Council for Communication, should be strengthened, ensuring decisions are made impartially and with advance notice provided to affected parties. All decisions should also be subject to appeal through competent judicial channels, promoting accountability and fairness in regulatory actions. It is essential for Treyer and other leaders to treat all news outlets equally, irrespective of their nationality, to avoid discriminatory practices seen in the suspensions of French media networks. Protecting media personnel from threats and violence is paramount, necessitating swift condemnation and accountability for any such acts, whether perpetrated by the government or non-state actors. In response to these suspensions, other TV stations and news outlets may indeed become more cautious in their reporting. They may prioritize fact-checking and verification of information to avoid facing similar sanctions. However, there is also a risk that some outlets may seek to fill the void left by suspended networks, potentially intensifying competition for attention through sensationalized or unchecked reporting. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our new travel channel. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you'll be notified whenever we post similar videos. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video.